O God, come to our aid. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Worship, glory, praise, and honour to our God, I throned above. We with many generations join to praise your name of love. In the scriptures by the Spirit may we see the Saviour's face. His word and heed is calling, know his will and grow in grace. The Lord will protect the rights of the oppressed. Lord, why do you stand far up and hide yourself in times of distress? The poor man is devoured by the pride of the wicked. He is caught in the schemes that others have made. For the wicked man boasts of his heart's desires. The coward just blasphemes and spurns the Lord. In his pride the wicked says he will not punish. There is no God, such are his thoughts. His path is ever untroubled. Your judgment is far from his mind. His enemies are regards with contempt. He thinks, never shall I falter. Misfortune shall never be my lot. His mouth is full of cursing and oppression, mischief and deceit under his tongue. He lies in wait among the reeds, the innocent he murders in secret. His eyes are on the watch for the helpless man. He lurks in hiding like a lion in his lair. He lurks in hiding to seize the poor. He seizes the poor man and drags him away. He crouches preparing to spring, and the helpless fall beneath his strength. He thinks in his heart God forgets, he hides his face, he does not see. Give praise to the Father Almighty, to his Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, to the Spirit who dwells in our hearts, both now and forever. Amen. The Lord will protect the rights of the oppressed. Lord, you have seen our trouble and sorrow. Arise then, Lord, lift up your hand. O God, do not forget the poor. Why should the wicked spurn the Lord and think in his heart he will not punish? But you have seen the trouble and sorrow you know did you take it in hand. The helpless trust himself to you, for you are the helper of the orphan. Break the power of the wicked and the sinner. Punish his wickedness till nothing remains. 
The Lord is King forever and ever. The heathen shall perish from the land he rose. Lord, you hear the prayer of the poor. You strengthen their hearts, you turn your ear. To protect the rights of the orphan and oppressed, so that mortal man may strike terror no more. Give praise to the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, both now and for ages unending. Amen. Lord, you have seen our trouble and sorrow. The words of the Lord are words without alloy, silver from the furnace, seven times refined. Help, O Lord, for good men have vanished. Truth has gone from the sons of men. False they speak one to another, with lying lips with a false heart. May the Lord destroy all lying lips, the tongue that speaks high sending words. Those who say our tongue is our strength, our lips are our own, who is our master. For the poor who are oppressed and the needy who crown, I myself will arise as the Lord. I will grant the salvation for which they thirst. The words of the Lord are words without alloy. Silver from the furnace seven times refined. It is you, O Lord, who will take us in your care and protect us forever from this generation. See how the wicked trowel on every side, while the worthless are prized highly by the sons of men. Give praise to the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, both now and for ages, unending. Amen. The words of the Lord are words without alloy, silver from the furnace, seven times refined. Behold now is the favourable time. This is the day of salvation. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. This is why, all you who are holy brothers and have had the same heavenly call should turn your minds to Jesus, the apostle and the high priest of our religion. He was faithful to the one who appointed him, just like Moses, who stayed faithful in all his house. But he has been found to deserve a greater glory than Moses. It is the difference between the honour given to the man that built the house and to the house itself. Every house is built by someone, of course, but God built everything that exists. It is true that Moses was faithful in the house of God as a servant, acting as witness to the things which were to be divulged later. But Christ was faithful as a son and as the master in the house. And we are his house, as long as we cling to our hope, with the confidence that we glory in. The Holy Spirit says, If only you would listen to him today, do not harden your hearts, as happened in the rebellion, on the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your ancestors challenged me and tested me, though they had seen what I could do for forty years. 
That was why I was angry with that generation and said, how unreliable these people who refuse to grasp my ways. And so in anger, I swore that not one would reach the place of rest I had for them. Take care, brothers, that there is not in any one of your community a wicked mind so unbelieving as to turn away from the living God. Every day, as long as this today lasts, keep encouraging one another so that none of you is hardened by the lure of sin, because we shall remain co-heirs with Christ only if we keep a grasp on our first confidence right to the end. In this saying, if only you would listen to him today, do not harden your hearts as happened in the rebellion. Those who rebelled after they had listened were all the people who were brought out of Egypt by Moses. And those who made God angry for 40 years were the ones who sinned and whose dead bodies were left lying in the wilderness. Those that he swore would never reach the place of rest he had for them were those who had been disobedient. We see then that it was because they were unfaithful that they were not able to reach it. Christ is faithful as the son in charge of God's house and we are his house. In him the whole building is bonded together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord and we are his house. A reading from the sermons of Pope Saint Leo the Great. Let our understanding, enlightened by the spirit of truth, take in with a pure and free spirit, the glory of the cross, which shines on heaven and earth. Let it see within a vision what the Lord meant when he spoke of his impending passion. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. And later, now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your Son. And when the voice of the Father had spoken from heaven, I have glorified him, and I will glorify him again. Jesus said in reply to the bystanders, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of the world. Now shall the rule of this world be cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all things to myself. O wonderful power of the cross, O indescribable glory of the passion, there is the tribunal of the Lord, and the judgment of the world, and the power of the crucified one. Lord, you drew all things to yourself, so that all nations everywhere, in their dedication to you, might celebrate in a full, clear, sacramental rite what was done only in the Jewish temple, and in signs and shadows. Now the order of the Levites is more glorious, the dignity of the elders more exalted, and the anointing of the priests more holy. For your cross is the source of all blessings, the cause of all graces. Through it, those who believe receive strength from weakness, glory from shame, life from death. Now too, the diversity of the carnal sacrifices is ended, and the one offering of your body and blood consummates all the different victims. For you are the true Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world. You bring all the mysteries to accomplishment, in yourself, so that as for all victims, there is now one sacrifice, so there may be one kingdom of all peoples. So dearly beloved, let us acclaim with the blessed teacher of the Gentiles, the Apostle Paul, gloriously acclaimed, the word is sure and worthy of all belief, Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners. All the more wonderful is the mercy of God towards us, because Christ died not for the just or the holy, but for the wicked and the impious. And though the divine nature could not admit the sting of death, by being born from us, he took what he could offer for us. 
In the past, he threatened our death with the power of his death, speaking through the, one, through the prophet Osi. Death, I shall be your death. Sheol, I shall be your bite. For by dying, he submitted to the laws of the underworld. But by rising again, he destroyed their power. And so he broke the uninterrupted sequence of death and made temporary what was eternal. For as all die in Adam, so shall all, so all shall live in Christ. Christ has done away with every record of the dead that we have paid by nailing it to the cross. On that cross he despoiled the cosmic powers and authorities and boldly made a spectacle of them, leading them as captive in his triumphal procession. When you have lifted up the Son of Man on the cross, you will know that I am he. On that cross he despoiled the cosmic powers and authorities, and boldly made a spectacle of them, leading them as captives in his triumphal procession. Let us pray. May your people, Lord, persevere in obedience to your will, so that through this obedience your church in our time may grow in grace and increase in numbers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God.